And we are live. Good evening or good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. A late live stream, no vodka, Federico. I just saw that um, comment in the chat. Uh, not tonight because I got a lot more testing to do tonight. We are inundated here with laptops, laptops, and more laptops. So I uh, wanted to do a live stream a little bit late. I know it's on the East Coast. It's about 11.17 in the evening. It's 8.17 p.m. Pacific time here in Las Vegas. It is a Wednesday, still Wednesday here, March 30th, 2022. Hope everybody has been doing okay. Uh, you should be seeing this video or this live stream, I should say, in 1440p, 60 frames per second. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to live stream tonight, but let's just see where, how far we can go. Good to see you, Handquake a member and, of course, moderator. Yeah, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stay awake, man. I've been burning the midnight oil getting these reviews out. Good, good to see you, Handquake. Uh, uh, Yvonne, how are you, my friend? Uh, am I going to go review the new XPS 15 with the Intel 12th gen? What do you think I'm going to do? Of course I'm going to do it. Um, I did speak to Dell, so hopefully that will be coming very soon. So uh, stay tuned. You, you want to make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um and let's see who else we have here. We have Federico, no vodka tonight. And it is, uh, I don't see the, the vodka, no. It's late, yeah, it's late, I'm tired, man. But I figured, what the hell, let's just hit the live button. Let's go do this. Uh, it's been a while, good to see you, my friend. Casually average, yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. So we got a nice small crowd tonight. 15 of you watching, do me a favor. Hit that like button so we can get this spread out over YouTube. How does it look? How does it sound? Let me know. So let's see a few more people come in, and then we'll get to the laptops. But in the meantime, I did re release my videos this week. I did three already. I have more coming. But I did the uh, – I started off with the Lenovo Yoga 9i 14 right here. As you see it, it's the Gen 7 officially. And it is a gorgeous laptop. Next to it, I did the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 X360 in this beautiful uh, burgundy color. And a uh, very interesting laptop. I'm having issues. as I, If you saw the video, you know what I'm talking about performance-wise. But absolutely gorgeous display. Gorgeous design. Thin, super thin and light. I mean, you can't get thinner and lighter than that. Uh, but it does have its issues we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. Again, I don't know how long we're going to go. And then, of course, this one is the yoga that we were just talking about. Uh, really in the running for the laptop of the year so far for the two-in-one convertibles. Uh, that's how much I like it. It's got a beautiful super ammo. It's got a beautiful OLED display, 14 inches. This one is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. This one is 16 to 9. Uh, it's got a resolution of 3840 by 2400, so that's UHD+. It is a 60 hertz display. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, this one is also 60 hertz, and, uh, but very, very good. Now, this is a 400 nit display, this, um, and this is also measuring 400 nits. Um, so really good stuff. Uh, on this now as far as the other laptop i reviewed i re released it today and that is of course the asus flow asus rog flow x13 here for 2022 it's a follow-up to last year's two-in-one ultra portable gaming laptop a convertible i have it here as well and you see it right here uh, a lot of fingerprints on this uh, but it is a really nice design i like the grooves on it I like the uh, overall aesthetics of it. Again, hard to keep it clean, but you can connect this to the XG Mobile, and there you go. It's a little dark. Yeah, well, there you go. I can I can make it a little bit lighter. Hold on. Uh, let me just go to the camera here. Let's lighten it up a little bit. I guess you can see it a little bit there. Um, should be a little bit better, Federico. Anyway, very informal tonight. Uh, check out the video of this. It's a, Let's get the views up on it. I was hoping for a little bit more views. Uh, what this brings to the table is a full HD plus display, 13.4 inches, 500 nit display, uh, touchscreen, 
Gorilla Glass on this that's really scratch resistant according to Asus. Uh, again, you can get it with the XG Mobile external GPU, but this is packing the Ryzen 9 6900HS, and um, you can see it here. And it also has the RTX 3050 Ti. So a lot of versatility on this. Numbers look good on it so far. 63 watt hour battery. We'll talk more about it. Um, now, as far as this one is concerned, uh, all metal design, all of these are all metal, so there's no question. Now, what Lenovo did was redesigned this uh, laptop, and I like what they did with the rounded edges, uh, going away from those sharp edges, and you're getting a much more comfortable grip on it. Um, I'm really liking the design aesthetics. You still get the rotating sound bar. It sounds really good. Um, you get a couple of USB-C ports here, and uh, you get Thunderbolt 4 port on this one. And then, of course, another USB-C on the right side. So you get, I think, two Thunderbolt, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2. Uh, but you don't get an SD card reader, as I mentioned. So if you didn't watch the video, check it out. But really liking it. And the other thing I really like is the fact that you still get a USB-A port, as you see there. So there are all the ports uh, looking really good. Now, this is the Storm Gray. Uh, one thing I did mention in the video, no place to store the pen. Now, this one sticks magnetically. And, of course, you can see all the fingerprints. So it sticks magnetically to the lid. But the bottom line is these are running the same chipset, the Intel Core i7-1260P. That has uh, 12 cores, eight, I think, performance cores, and then four efficiency cores for a total of eight. And I am really impressed with the multi-core performance on this Lenovo Yoga, getting over 10,000 score in the multi-core score in the Geekbench 5 test, half of that on this one. And that's been the issue so far with, the, um, with that Yoga I'm sorry, with the Samsung device, that has been the issue because I'm seeing about half the performance. And I think if you take a look at these two, they're both thin and light. You can see there was no way place to store the pen there. Uh, both thin and light, but this one is even thinner and lighter. And you can see it here, that burgundy. And I think the thermal profile on this, the thermal envelope is rather limited. So they had to temper the performance, and I think that's what we're seeing here. People are buying this; they're not buying it for, 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 for uh, are not buying it for performance. They're buying it because they want the sleekest, the thinnest, the lightest, the coolest looking burgundy laptop out there. So there you go. Now, resolution, according to Handquake, is asking that the resolution on this one thirty eight forty by twenty four hundred UHD plus. Interestingly, this is 1920 by 1080. They stuck with a full HD resolution. Now, you might be saying, well, why the hell did they do that? Well, a couple of reasons, I think. They're looking for battery life to be uh, acceptable on it because if you went with a Super AMOLED display with a uh, high-resolution display 4K, you're going to eat into the battery life. But with the uh, one they have on here with the battery that's in here, you're, you're going to do a little bit better because of that full HD resolution. Now, so both of them are very good. Now, the biggest gripe I had last year was, hold on, was that this one, uh, this one didn't get bright enough. Remember, that was one of my biggest complaints about it. I mean, I love the display and you can see it's still, it's still glossy, but I think it's a little bit better. A still glossy display. You can see I have a lot of lights here. But it is getting to the 400 nits. I couldn't break 300 nits last time. So that's actually been pretty good. So I think they solved one of my biggest problems with it. Uh, thinner, two to three millimeters uh, is meaningless. I'd rather, and I agree, would rather have that extra width or extra thickness and put in either a bigger battery, better cooling solution, so we won't run into the performance issues that, we're at, we're you, that we found on this. Now, Let's be clear about something, people. The performance is going to be fine for everyday use. And as I mentioned in the video, you're going to be no problems doing Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, watching movies. In fact, it's been really good on this uh, Super AMOLED display. But the problem you're going to run into is when you're doing anything multi-core or stuff like that, you might have some issues when you compare it to the something like this, which is thicker, but does have the better thermal 
envelope on this to allow for better cooling, to allow for better performance. How's the chassis on the Samsung? Is it flex? Um, very, very little, if any, actually hardly any. A little bit more on the Yoga, believe it or not. But again, both sturdy, both well-made laptops, that's for sure. Good to see Jeremy Carter here. Uh, Jeremy Carter, sorry. Jeremy Tarter. Haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, good to see you, my friend. Uh, any news on the XPS 13 Plus? Um, so I did, okay, so I did speak to uh, Dell. We should be getting it in very, very soon. Uh, so stay tuned. So we're not only waiting for the XPS 13 Plus, we're also waiting for the 15 and the 17, which have already been refreshed this year, announced by Dell. So soon that will be coming. So Again, a lot of good stuff coming to the channel, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. So we have 29 of you in this impromptu late night after dark show looking at uh, these two babies. This is the Yoga 9 14 inch. This is the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. I wish they would shorten that name. I'm, I hate having to always remember how to say it in the videos, uh, but really, really nice stuff. Both attract fingerprints, as you can see. It's nothing I can do about it, but I want you to see it all raw here. See how we do it here. Um, portable can be a deal breaker. Well, you know, it's a matter of aesthetics. It's a matter of portability. It's a matter of a lot of things when it comes to these laptops. They have to decide what is the balance here. Do we want to make it look great, super cool, super sleek? and then sacrifice performance because of that thinness? Or do we want to add a couple of more millimeters, better battery, better cooling, better performance? I'd rather do that. And we got our first super chat from our good buddy, Handquake. So uh, let me see if I remember which button it is. And good to see you, Handquake. I hope I hit the right one here. I think I did. But thank you for that $2 super chat. Tapper's review is here, and good to see you, my friend. I'll take the thicker devices with greater functionality and durability every time. And I, I think I agree with you. Uh, although I love the way this looks and this gorgeous burgundy finish, I do like the way this looks as well. And it's a thicker device. It's a little bit heavier, actually, than last year's model. And so really, really good. Now, uh, men Mentalik... Mentalic Mutant, Mentalic Mutant, good name. Would you take the Samsung if it was $500 cheaper? That's my conundrum. So that's a good question. And would I take it if it was $200 or $500 cheaper? Um, well, I did buy it with my own money, just so for anybody knows. The one from Lenovo was sent as a review unit, as you know. Uh, but as far as the Samsung, for $500 less, uh, for the less performance I'm getting out of it, you know, it's a nice... Thin and light, ultra portable, take with you on the go. It's super sleek looking. It is an eye turner. It's a really eye catching device. Um, so for that, if you're looking for that, an executive I can see walking around with this in their suit or whatever, they would probably like to have something like this. Again, super thin and light. I mean, look at this. Um, you know, just a little bit over a kilogram or whatever it is, 2.2 pounds or whatever the actual weight is. Uh, look, I mean, look at that. It's just super thin and light. And it is gorgeous. And the display is gorgeous, even at a full HD resolution. Now, they didn't go to a 16 to, not, 16 to 10 aspect ratio. They stuck with the 16 to 9. And, you know, I can understand why they want to do it. They're one of the last holdovers with 16 to 9. And there you can see the fingerprint reader in action, uh, could have stuck with it. They did stick with the 16 to 9. Why didn't they go to the 16 to 10 like Lenovo did on this one, right? So that is another good question. Um, I don't have an answer for it. I think the reason they're sticking to this is because they have these displays probably in bulk. They've mass produced them. So that's my, probably one reason to keep it at 16 to 9. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it would have been nice to give you an option for a 2K or even a 4K display. But at 13.3 inches, it might be overkill, but we'll see. Lots of fingerprints on the Samsung Federico, absolutely. Asus seems to be leading in that charge uh, in terms of what? I'm probably picking up the, that conversation late. I got to have portability. It's one of the reasons I like the Surface. Yeah, Trey, you know, of course, I'm a big fan of the Surface devices. We review them on the channel. Uh, but... I think reality is with the Samsung, they're left behind with the 16 to 9 aspect ratio. What, you know, even though it is super portable and you can do the whole convertible thing with it, like you see here, 
No problems uh, in terms of that. And it's great with the S Pen. They include the S Pen with it. But, I mean, I would have preferred a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. I think that's been the trend. Or even 3 to 2 as the Surface devices and some other devices we're going to be seeing soon. So a lot of things to consider when looking at these kind of devices. Now, as far as this Lenovo is concerned... There's are, there are some other benefits this year around improvements. We're talking about a 2 megapixel 1080p camera. We, we showed you a, an example of it in the video. This one also moved to a full HD camera, 1080p camera on this one. Both looked really good, I thought. Uh, this has the blurred background one where if you bring up the camera, and I can show you here real quick, and then we can even probably connect it so you can see uh, directly onto this laptop. But... And here you can see it's already been enabled here. So you can see it there. And if I hit the, the button here, I could turn it off. See, there it is turned off. Just going to sort of see it here. And then you could turn it on. Hope that's the game mode. So, and then again, they have the extra rows here, as you see here. So you can see this extra rows here. You get to change the thermal profile on this one. Blurred background on this one. You could change the audio profile. You could change whether dark mode or light mode with this one. And then, of course, the fingerprint reader. You could see it there. Um, and if we want, I can show you here a little bit better. On, uh, bring switch to the, the portable camera here, the iPhone. And if we go here, you can actually see it a little bit better. There it is. So again, top one changes the different thermal profiles. The second one is to blur the background on the webcam. The, the next one after that is to, to change the audio profile and then to change it from light mode to dark mode in the, in the OS. So that's going to be good. And then you have the uh, fingerprint reader. And here you can see the keyboard, the familiar smile-shaped keys. There's the um, sound bar. And by the way, they go with Bowers and Wilkins now. So that's a change from the past. I think it was Bang & Olufsen previously. Not much of a difference in terms of the sound. I thought the sound was very good. We got some stickers on it. There you go. And I want to welcome our latest member of the channel, and that would be Mentalic Mutant. Good to have you aboard, my friend. You just became a member. And uh, that is really appreciated. He's joined on the join the channel if you want to become a member people why don't you hit that uh join button it's uh, probably less than a cup of coffee i don't think you can get a cup of coffee at starbucks for less than five dollars right so maybe this might give you a little bit more entertainment maybe this will help you know make your day a little bit better why not consider joining oh, but of course super chat super stickers are open help support the channel and of course just watching give me the watch time and being supportive of the channel in that way subscribing liking and doing all those things so uh, i appreciate that mental mentalic thank you so much mentalic mutant i should say thank you so much are any of these haptic touch pads no these are not haptic touch pads uh not this time around i know we had it with the black version with the glass and everything on the last one uh not not this time around so that camera was pretty interesting. It has a few gimmicks on that. I thought it was good. This one was good as well. Let's take a look. And we could bring them both up, actually. Get, a, get an idea. Let me turn off the background mode. Okay. So here you can sort of see them. Again, I have a lot of studio lights here, so bear with me on that. Um, just trying to get it to a right angle. Uh, they're both pretty good. Again, they're in the videos on each individual video that I did so far. So check it out if you haven't already done so. Andrew Jimenez, how you doing? I'm bummed out that the i9's port selection, but I hope more la laptops with 1080p cameras release. Yeah, you're going to see a slew of all these new cameras, new laptops going to have good cameras on them. IPS or OLED, Keith Benjamin, these are both OLED. This is AMOLED. Super AMOLED is what, of course, Samsung likes to call it. This is an OLED display. Both are very, very good. Less reflection, less glare on the Yoga, more so on the Samsung. 
Yeah, I think, Keith, I think these are really good-looking laptops. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, design-wise, I like what Lenovo did here, rounding off the edges. I thought they were really good in that regard. I like what they did. You know, the design language here is really good. And, of course, this is absolutely gorgeous, thin, light, super portable as far as the Samsung is concerned. Uh, and there you go. Now, if you look here, you can see there are different auto – they have auto-framing – I can enable auto framing on the Samsung and you can see you can see it sort of moves with me. You see how it's auto framing me, keeping me in the frame. So uh, I think it's also on the Lenovo. I didn't play with that yet. Let me see if I could find it, the settings here. Not really sure. Does this one do it? I gotta see, I gotta play around with it a little bit more. Uh, I didn't really get too much into the camera yet although I did do a few things with it. But again, I like this camera. I like both of them. They're both looking good. The other one has the background effect. You could also blur the background on this one. Sort of see it there. So you could do the, the background effect. And if I do blur, doesn't look like it's doing much, to be honest. Let's see if I do it in video, maybe. Yeah, I didn't see too much of blurred background. Uh... It's sort of changing the lighting now. What the hell? How do I fix that? Like that 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 blurred background is pretty intense. Oh, there it is. Okay, that was pretty intense. So, and then this is the blurred background on this one. Yeah, every, every very informal tonight, people. Very informal. So, and this one will sort of keep me in frame, I guess. But very interesting. It's the barcode mode, I think. Okay. Oh, that's because I think I hit the barcode. Anyway, so you get my drift. I got to start playing with these more for the full review on each one. But that's the deal, people, with that. Pretty interesting. All right, we got 30 of you watching. Yeah, half the performance for two to three uh, millimeters is too much. Um, you know, it's just a matter of what you're looking for in a laptop. Uh, Samsung lowered the TDP for the processor way too much. Pretty stupid of Samsung to go this way. Um, you know, I understand why they did it. Battery, obviously, is going to be very interesting with this because of the so thin and so light nature of it that I think, you know, with this AMOLED display and all these factors playing into it, making it brighter. Remember, I couldn't even break 300 nits on the last year's model. This one's at 400 nits. That's a lot brighter than it was. So, of course, battery will be taking a hit because of that. So, yeah, they really had to make some compromises here. Uh, you re Dr. B really likes the yoga. Went to go see it, what, what was in stock. Right now, it didn't look like they had anything but the base model. So if you go over to my video on this, on the Lenovo, and you go over to the website, yes, the base model is available to order right now. I think it's about $1,450, or I think $1,499, $1,449, actually. Uh, that gets you the IPS display, and I believe it's the full HD. I don't think it's the OLED. And it also gets you, uh, I don't know if it gets you the 1260p. I think it gets you the Core i5, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody correct me if I'm not if I'm mistaken. And uh, you don't get that AMOLED. You don't get the 4K plus. Okay, so that's going to be the big difference there. Uh, Carlos Castro got the Samsung Graphite. Okay, he got the Graphite model. I have the Burgundy here. Uh, hasn't arrived yet, but would take would take any time over Lenovo. So again, they're both very good depending on what you're looking for. A better performing laptop will be this. Uh, both have pen support. Uh, this pen comes with the unit, and so does this pen over here, the S Pen. That comes with it as well. So, you know, it's just a matter of what you like. Some people are in the Samsung ecosystem, so that's going to make a lot of sense to continue to, you know, stay within that ecosystem, much like people with Apple devices, right? So you get a lot of the functionality with Dex, and you get all these functionality between the phone and the tablet and the laptop so you want that continuity and you want to stay within that ecosystem and i can understand that lenovo is a little bit more open in the sense that 
you know, it's not tied to any ecosystem part in one particular ecosystem other than being a Windows laptop, uh, but it does offer better performance, better multi-core performance for sure, scoring over 5,000, or sorry, scoring over 10,000 on the Geekbench 5 test. So you just got to decide what you want. Is it aesthetics? Is it portability? I mean, both are very portable, but this is super portable. Uh, again, very, very interesting laptops. Wild camera tech, absolutely, Trey. And we're gonna, I'm going to delve more into the respective uh, individual review videos that I'm going to do on it. Now, they made a big announcement today regarding the Intel Arc uh, graphics. I still need to delve into that and learn more about it. Uh, but really, really nice, waiting for the Intel Arc for review. Yeah, we're going to be getting in uh, some with Intel Arc over the next few months. So stay tuned. We're going to be seeing more and more stuff regarding that. So let me see if I can uh, show you a little bit more of the of this one. Okay, um, hold on. Let me switch the cameras here. So you can see how much fingerprints the burgundy gets, by the way. It's just unavoidable. And you can see how glossy the display is. It's a little bit better than it used to be. Uh, again, this one does show some fingerprints, but not as bad. And you can see it is glossy, but not as glossy. So really, really interesting. But you could also see how thin that Samsung is, right? How thin it is. So uh, again, very portable. I think it's a little bit over a kilogram or a little bit over 2.27, 2.29 pounds. I mean, you really don't you can't get much better than that as far as portability. Uh, this one weighs, I think this came in over 3.2 pounds or something like that. So that is a little bit heavier than last year's model, but I think for good reason, because the Core i7-1260P that this is packing with its 12 cores, both performance and efficient cores, are going to need a little bit more cooling, I guess, or whatever, but it has a better thermal envelope on this one. So you can definitely see the difference there. Um, so there you go. And I just wanted to give you a close up on that. I'm trying to up the production quality here a little bit, right? So we can move this out of the way. Uh, anyway, it's all right if it sticks out a little bit. Okay, good to see Omega Malkafor, Malkior. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, you love Windows 11 from the first leaked build to the latest dev build now. So it's good to see you. Um, you got your Yoga 9i, the Gen 7, and got the Time Spy CPU score of 10,060 with these 12th Gen chips are brutal. You know, that's a really good score. Um, actually, Time Spy, I thought you meant Geekbench. I'm sorry. Um, you know, let me know what you think about it, Omega. What's what's your take on it so far? Now, did you get, which one did you get? Did you get the one that, now, I got the one that was sent to me from Lenovo. I didn't, I will be getting the one that is available, that entry-level model. And let me just uh, <coughs> get your take on it, Omega, because I want to see how you're doing with it and so far. Have you done any Geekbench tests on besides the Time Spy? That would be pretty interesting. Uh, on mine, let me see what I got on the Time Spy. So on the Time Spy, I got uh, 1966. So what did you get? You, I, I think you meant the, the, the Geekbench, right? What you said with the 10,000? Times by CPU score, CPU score. Yeah, I'm only getting 6833. So that's uh, that's pretty interesting, Omega. Uh, and I had it on the performance mode. So I have to see what's going on. Maybe I need to update it. Do I have any clue when the OLED 9i14 will come to the US? I put in a request to find out that information from Lenovo. Uh, hopefully soon, from what I understand. So if I get any concrete information, I will let you guys know. Uh, any with Windows, hello. So this one, um, did I, I don't remember. <laughs> Let me go to the settings here, I'll tell you, because I have so many laptops I'm working on right now. Uh, if anybody knows right away, let us know. Let me go back here. Hold on, I'll get out of the system. Here we go. Do I have uh, sign-in options here? Let's see. Take a look at it. Yeah, so this one, of course, yeah, this one is Windows Hello. This one is not. So that uses the fingerprint scanner, which this is doubles as a fingerprint scanner. This does have Windows Hello. And the fingerprint scanner is also located here. So yes, so one has Windows Hello. 
So the difference in weight between these laptops is meaningless. Close your eyes and measure how much harder it is to hold 1.4 kilograms in your hand rather than 1.1, how much harder it is to hold in your hand. To me personally, well, I don't see, you know, I don't mind carrying a little bit heavier if it means I'm going to get better battery life, if it means I'm going to get better uh, performance out of it, better cooling, I'll take the extra weight and thickness. That's for sure. That's just me. Uh, weight matters a lot when used as a tablet. So that's the other thing. How often are you going to use this in tablet? It will play a role. They're both convertible, so you can use it in the different modes. So that has been pretty good. Uh, both of them have been very good. This is obviously a lot heavier in your hand for long-term use as a tablet as opposed to this one. So good point on that. So you got a 9128 in the Geekbench, okay? So you, I think, do you have the 1240p or do you, I think I have the 1260p, right? So you might have, is that the Core i5 or do you have the Core i7 Omega? I'm just curious because I don't remember what that entry level one has. I'm assuming it's the Core i5 maybe. Let me know. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I got over, I think, 10, almost 10.5 on that, right? So there's a difference there. But again, I don't know. We'd have to see what you have. Are you going? Yes, I will be definitely doing, Jeremy, I will definitely be doing the Z series and the ThinkPads for sure. I already spoke to Lenovo just as soon as they get it. Oh, so you have the same one, the 60P. All right. Base model is 1260p for some reason. Yeah, that's the one I have. I have the Core i7, 1260p, but I do have the 4K OLED panel. So, and then by the way, this is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio for those wondering, 16 to 10. Um, so yeah, that's been pretty good. Now, Gen 4 SSD speeds on this, I have had no issues. Uh, this one has not the greatest speeds as far as the SSD uh, I guess at a minimum of a Gen 3 type speed, speed, I guess, maybe less. I didn't find it particularly fast when you compare it to something like this. Uh, this one, let me just take a quick look. We got um, on this one for the reads and writes, 65, 65.39 on the reads, 49, 58.48 on the writes, which are excellent, excellent. This one didn't do quite as well. This has a 256 gigabyte ssd and here's my screenshot on that and this one did um let's take a look at it 1979.08 on the read and 1118.57 on the right much slower 256 gig uh, ssd not as fast that's for sure has low scores absolutely omega um now your only gripe with the 9i is the new right keys so you don't care for this uh, row here um, kind of useless for actual use versus the Spectre's right side keys. You know, it's just a matter of personal preference. What he's talking about is this row right here. So you can see it here uh, close up. And I think to, for the most part, it's been okay. I don't know. I, I kind of think it's a, a nice uh, feature. Again, I like having one button access to things. Uh, you still have, if you don't have the function lock, you still have to use it with the function key, but still, nonetheless, I thought it was okay. Let's take a look at it in closer here, and here you can see it. So, I don't know. Let me know, people, what do you think about this new row here on the right side? Omega, not crazy about it. I, I'm, you know, I'm ambivalent towards it. I think it's good for what it is, but, you know, if I didn't have it there, it wouldn't make a difference either. So, just let me know. Uh, as far as the touchpad... And so you're hitting the touchpad accidentally. Not really. The touchpad is, let's see what he has to say. The touchpad is now, it's 45% bigger, by the way, people. It is 40. I didn't say that in the video. I did say it's nicely sized, but it is 45% bigger. And you can see it here. This one has a smaller touchpad, but it is a nicely proportioned to that, you know, smaller laptop. But again, 45% bigger on this one. Very responsive. I, I haven't had any problems. You're always hitting the touchpad accidentally. People sometimes like to use them. People use mice instead. Just depends on what you like to do. Um, and yeah, so I think is your overall take on it positive? I think it has been pretty positive. In fact, I'm liking it a lot. I'm liking the um, Yoga 9 i14 a lot or what it's bringing to the table here. I think it's better than last year's model. I like the 16 to 10. I like the 4K OLED that they're offering with this. I don't have pricing on that yet. I'm looking into that. And I don't have availability 
just yet as far as when you can buy it. So, and by the way, a huge shout out to Lenovo. And by the way, the um, the product manager for this ma model here, for the 9i, uh, actually left a comment. If you go into my video, into the comments, the product manager liked the video and he says he will be watching the comment section very closely because one of the things that I was concerned about is there's no place to store the pen. Again, not magnetically, but they do give you a really nice sleeve. And let me take, let me show you the sleeve in a moment here. Let me get it actually. So they gave you this sleeve here and has some yoga branding on it. It's actually pretty nice and you can see it here. Uh, very nice cloth material. Uh, but one of the big things about it, and you can see it here, is the place to store the pen. And you can see it here. And it goes right in this slot right there. So they give you a solution. And by the way, this is included, from what I understand, in all the SKUs, not like some other manufacturers. They are putting this with every system. And I think they needed to because, again, they had no place to store the pen. And again, they have an extra pocket here, two pockets. So pretty nice, pretty nice uh, quality. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get a drink here. Um, but yeah, so far it's good. Uh, how clicky are the keyboards? Now, I did a sound test for the keyboard typing in both videos. So check it out. Um, that's something new I've been doing on the videos. Hope you guys like it. As we have 57 of you watching right now. Um, I like this one with the smile shaped keys, but there's something really satisfying about the one from Samsung because even though it is a shallow key travel, it just has a really nice clickety feel. Again, check out the video for the sound, but both are really nice keyboards. I have no issues with the keyboards. I would I would point it out if I did, of course, but so far it's looking good, Trey. So far it's looking good. Use the touch screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good to see you, Usman. Uh, the product manager, you know, I actually, I'm thinking of asking him to join on the live stream in a special edition. So uh, let me see if they'll, he'll be uh, amenable to coming on to the show. We can maybe do an open question Q and A with the product manager, because this way you'll have direct access, but he is monitoring. And I forgot his name. I, I apologize in advance, but it is in the chat. And you, I think it was Raymond. I think it was Raymond something. But anyway, you can go into the chat and you can see where he says, I'm the product manager. We're watching the chat. We're taking notes. Uh, one of the things they're trying to figure out for the future versions, what do you do with the pen, right? So my suggestion is do what Samsung did here. Um, even though you want to give us a full-size pen, you don't want the little pen in the silo, then at least do something like this where it'll stay connected magnetically. Maybe you could do the same on this lid. I don't know. It's not perfect solution, but it's some solution. Now, I understand they did give you this. Uh, you know, with the, the sleeve, with the uh, slot for the pen. That's nice, but not everybody wants to use the sleeve. I mean, some people just want to throw it in the bag without anything, I guess. I don't know. I'm just looking for all sorts of suggestions that maybe we can have this product manager on the show and we can actually ask him questions in real time. That would be pretty interesting. So let me look into it. I'd love to have a guest on and we can probably go from there. Um, so there you go. Compare the speakers. So I did sound tests also. I'm starting to do more sound tests, but I'm going to have to do more comparison sound tests because really without a comparison, really it's not, I don't like doing sound tests on videos simply because they don't, they're meaningless because first of all, everybody's listening on different devices, different sound systems, uh, whether it be headphones, whether it be speakers, whether it be on a TV. So you're not going to all get the same experience. So it's really meaningless unless I do it with a comparison, say with something like this, which is to me the 2019 MacBook Pro, which has some outstanding speakers. And I've mentioned that in the past. So there you go. So I... Idevin Systems, it even systems. I have a proof on how every laptop manufacturer is truly stupid. They don't make affordable vinyl stickers for the laptops, nor do they make plastic covers. Third-party uh, companies get involved in this. Yeah, well, you know, I guess people need to make money. These third-party companies fill a void, I guess, if by doing that. 
So uh, Mentalic uh, Mutant says he's very impressed with the 9 eye speakers look really good. The way it swivels is very impressive. Yeah, so what he's talking about is that you have this rotating sound bar right here. And with the rotating sound bar, and you can see it better here, um, with the rotating sound bar, you get the, the sound, the good sound, no matter which mode you're in. So if I show you here, you could sort of see it here. And this sound bar sounds really good. I mean, if you're in the tent mode, so am I messing the studio? Tent mode, and there you can see how much stuff came into the studio. So don't, don't blame me here, people. It'll be cleaned up by tomorrow. Nah, not really. <laughs> I'm lying. It won't be cleaned up. Uh, you, you get the benefit of the sound bar depending on what mode you're in. So again, if you're in the uh, tent mode, if you're in the, uh, this is the presentation mode or the stand mode, you still get the benefit of this speaker. And then of course, if you're in the tablet mode, you get it as well. So pretty nicely done there as far as the engineering. Pretty unique. I'm surprised other manufacturers don't follow suit with something like that. Uh, pretty interesting uh, how they did that. And I think it has some of the better Windows speakers system you're going to get. Again, move to Bowers and Wilkins now. Um, whether it made a huge difference from last year, I don't know. I think they were good last year. So uh, pretty nice as a tablet. And as far as this one is concerned... This one is nice as well. Again, you can put it into the tablet mode. This is a little bit lighter, obviously, than this one. So at 2.2, 2.3 pounds, or whatever it is, 2.29, you're going to have a lot easier time carrying this around than you would uh, something like this. So this one will be a lot um, heavier, and I can feel the big difference. You can actually feel the difference when they're in the tablet mode. So... For those wondering what it's like as a tablet, these are what they look like as tablets. Uh, not the most comfortable, either one for very long periods of time, but it is uh, something to be aware of. If you are going to be buying this for tablet functionality, you, you know, weight is going to be an issue. So uh, just you want to make sure you have the most comfortable experience. But these are versatile devices, no question about it. So according to IT, it even systems, IT even systems, true, well done Lenovo for innovating, put effort into the sound quality uh, in any mode. I agree, impressive and useful Florida studio projects will even be more enjoyable or FL studio products. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Have you tried the no fan setting on the Samsung one? Um, no fan, it gets very, it starts to heat up a little bit. I'm still in the middle of testing that. I'll report my findings in the full review. Uh, but the fans do kick in when you are in the performance mode. Obviously, when you're in the silent mode, I didn't really hear them all that much, but it does get warmer, that's for sure. You know, they feel good to hold. I'm not, you know, it's not overly heavy and it's very comfortable now because you don't have those sharper edges on this one. It's a much uh, more comfortable grip. This one has sharper edges. Yeah, these are much sharper, not as comfortable on this one, but this is obviously lighter than this one. So, you know, just bear in mind, you're dealing with uh, different, you know, engineering type styles here, different, you know, design language on both of these. Um, oh, there is no fan mode in the BIOS for the 9i. Okay, I didn't check that. So interesting. And you discovered that today. Okay. Andrew, look into the unit to, I don't know which thermal camera would come super handy for while you're doing that. You know, I have a, a thermal camera here. You've seen it in my videos. Uh, yeah, I have this. I have this from uh, FLIR. And it connects to my uh, USB-C based Android devices. So I've been using this and you've been seeing it in my videos. I've been, I've had it for like at least six months. You've been seeing it. So yes, I definitely have thermal stuff coming on these. I've already put some in the video. Uh, this is a fantastic device, by the way, by FLIR and it connects via USB-C, but you could also get one for the iPhone. So very interesting. Can you show the, the, the two from the side in tablet mode? Yeah, I can show you right here. So here they are. Again, ignore the glare from that light, but here, here they are in tablet mode. You can get an idea. 
and there they are. And you can see the thickness and so forth, gives you, give you an idea. Um, and again, you can go here, I can show you, put them like side by side, and we can switch cameras here. You can get an idea of size in tablet mode. So uh, very interesting. And again, side shot that you wanted is right here. There you go. You ask and you get. And I, somebody didn't like that, by the way. <laughs> F them, who cares? All right. So correct model is the UniT, UT, is that the Unitel? I don't know. I, this works perfectly fine. This works perfectly fine um, That I, for my use, again, from FLIR. I'll show you more if I do want to do some accessories and stuff. Did I get a, screen, a free monitor with my Samsung? I did. I did get it. It's the Odyssey, and it's upstairs. Um, I was going to do a separate video on it. I haven't unboxed it yet. 32-inch Odyssey gaming monitor for free. I think it's about a $359 or $399 or something that that affect value if you pre-order. I don't know if they're still offering that, but yes, I did get it. It was shipped separately. It actually came uh, the same the day before, the same day, I don't remember, of the uh, actual laptop here. The pen is also back there. That's why it's not flat. Oh, yeah, so I didn't take the pen off. Yeah, I could do that. Hold on. So here's the pen. I just took it off. So now it's flat, right. I forgot the pen was there. Good point. So here it is, uh, flat in tablet mode, okay? Move that away so you can see it here, right? And then this one, this is how flat this one gets. A little bit more heavier, but there you can get an idea, okay? So good, to, good that you pointed that out. So Fre Federico, it is flat. I just forgot to take the S Pen out. My fault, my bad. All right. So I can't believe it's already 49 minutes. We have 62 of you watching. Let me see how the videos are doing. One second. Let me just go. Let me see what the hell's going on with these videos. So if you're joining us late, I did my, uh, did release a video today. The Asus ROG Flow X13. That was released, um, today and I, I was hoping some more people would watch it i don't know it's kind of interesting you know with i do some ultra portable gaming stuff i've been doing gaming stuff i'm expecting more views i'm not sure what's going on here today people so we'll see we'll see all right so let me just get something straightened out on, on this stream hold on let me just get an idea of where we are Okay, there we go. So everything's looking good. All right, so for those joining us late, we're looking at the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. That's now on the left. That was before it was on the right. Uh, now this one is on the right. This is the Lenovo Yoga 9i 14-inch as we're at 9.05 p.m. Pacific time. So hope everybody's doing okay. It's good to be back. I didn't live stream. Been busy getting these laptops in, trying to review everything. So... Hopefully, you've all been watching the videos. Yeah, 9i, you can do a light gaming. In fact, I saw improved performance on these XE graphics. So uh, if you go here, this one has uh, XE graphics. Well, they both do. But this one, uh, I thought was improved. Um, I thought the, and I'll, I'll show you more in the video coming up on it. But I thought that, the XE graphics were improved as well. And I don't know if it's because of the thermals have been better. Now, I've got a nice result on the battery test, people, and I can give you a little uh, preview. I can actually give you a sneak peek or a preview of it. This is what I got on this Lenovo as far as my test that I do for the videos. And you can probably see it here, but if not, I'll just read it to you. I got 16 hours and 53 minutes with 2% left. So almost seven, a little bit over 17 hours on the continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi, 150 nits, battery saver mode. So what does that mean? 
So 17 hours on that test means I'm roughly conservative here in terms of how you use it, of course, mixed use, real world, maybe 10 to 12 hours. That is impressive. It's a very efficient chipset uh, because you're dealing with the performance cores, you're dealing with the efficiency cores. I think that played a role in it, but very, very good battery on this um, and on this unit. And this is also a bigger battery. You're now looking at 75 watt hours versus 60 watt hours from last year. So 15 hour, 15 watt hours more, and it's been translating to more real world battery use. So 1260 and 1280 seem to be very interesting processes, but at the moment, not enough tests made on them, especially how they affect battery life. And I just said in the battery life that I got, and that's you're probably the first to hear it. I don't know anybody else who's tested this chip. I might be the only one. And I got just about 17 hours. Probably we can extrapolate to over 17 hours on that continuous web surfing test. And to be, on, be specific, 1653, but it still had 2% left. So there you go. Now Omega is saying in terms of raw performance, the 1260 with the RTX 3070 gets uh, 1440p, 144 hertz in Doom Eternal Ultra settings. Okay. Okay, that's good. And, um, and according to... Uh, IT even systems, best probably to wait for someone selling a Lenovo Yoga 9i on eBay or such. 1500 seems too expensive for an average user. Again, it's just a matter of what you're looking for, right? It's just a matter of what you're looking for. Uh, it depends, right? It, I can't answer that question simply because everybody's uses are a little bit different. I appreciate that, Federico. Hit the like button. I appreciate that. Andrew is doing this for us. There's great reviews on the web. Yeah, but people don't care. Federico, people don't care. <laughs> uh, there is no dream. The dream laptop hasn't been made yet, my friend, Keith. It, it you know, hasn't been made yet. You know, I look, I'm busting my ass getting these reviews out, and I don't know what's going to hit or miss. Uh, the yoga was a hit, right? So I'm, I think I'm over 16,000 now. I'm approaching 16,000. We're going to approach 20,000 hopefully by tomorrow. That's good. In three, four days, that's actually pretty good. Uh, the Samsung I'm ahead, I think it's about seven, 8,000 views. Uh, the one I released today, not so great. I don't think I had 2000 views yet. So that's an interesting laptop, right? The one I have here, hold on. So, you know, we can bring it out over here and I can show you, you know, this is an interesting laptop as well with it's all black finish. You can hear that. Um, and this is the Asus ROG Flow X13 and this uh, also very thin and light, but has more ports. Uh, it's obviously a little bit heavier than these guys. But again, this is packing an RTX 3050 Ti, believe it or not. The AMD Ryzen 9 6900HS. Very, very impressive indeed. So uh, I've been very happy with it. And the display has been very good also. Um, the display has been very good. You can see it here in the background there. Um, full HD. It's not a higher res. It's a full HD 1920 by 1200. And I think the idea of this is you want to take it with you on the go. It could also be a work laptop, a travel laptop. Doesn't take up a lot of weight. Doesn't take up a lot of room. But when you want to get that gaming done, um, you can do it, you can definitely game on it, even without getting that external GPU, that um, XG Mobile that I should be getting in very soon, by the way. Uh, you don't need to get it. The Flow 13 or the X13 has an RTX 3050 Ti in it. But I would like to get it into the studio because not only does it have a GPU in it, it also acts as a hub with additional ports that you might want to get. Uh, I haven't tested the battery yet, so that's going to be the next step with this. Tonight, I'm going to put in my battery test overnight, and we'll see what I get the results in the morning. So before, after I end this live stream, I will put in my test. So that'll run the continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi, 150 nits, and we'll get our results. I'll have that by tomorrow, and I'll put that in the full review. So there you go. Um. 
So C Twick is asking, do 1440p monitors like the BenQ work well with the MacBooks in general? You have the M1 Air. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. But again, I don't have too many experience. I have one BenQ here uh, back in the studio back there, but I haven't used it so in a long time. So it's in a, it's actually in my storage closet right now. Um, so I can't really answer that. But MacBooks, uh, if you're doing multiple monitors on the M1 Air, might have some issues on multiple monitors. But uh, for a single monitor, you'll be fine. So, um, Andrew, good question. If you would talk to Lenovo product manager, what would you ask for the next iteration of the Yoga 9 micro SD card slot? Anything else? So place to store the pen. Uh, I, you know, here's another idea that I thought about. Maybe bring back the silo that we had with the small pen, but then also give us the option to buy a bigger pen like we get here, right? So that might be one way to do it. Um, that, that might be a solution because if you don't want to take a pen with you, throw this one in your bag, but then you still have the small pen. I think years ago, Lenovo used to give two pens, right? One small one, one big one, if I remember on one of the lines, maybe one of the tablet PCs of yesteryear, but, um, they make these, uh, pens. They're good pens. This one actually goes with this one, but the pen for this one, where is it? It's here somewhere. I must've put it somewhere. But anyway, the pen, oh, it's in the sleeve. It's in the sleeve. You see, there's the problem. I just demonstrated the issue. You know, if it's in the sleeve, you're not going to use it. But if it's in the device or attached somehow to the device, you're going to use it. So there you go. So you like the pen with the silo. And again, bring it back. Here's my suggestion to the product manager, and hopefully we'll get them on the show. Bring it back, but also maybe throw one of these in the bag, you know, into the box rather. Uh, give us the option. Maybe we'll pay a little bit extra if you want. That's an option. You could always do that. Um, so that's just a suggestion. I don't know. See, I already lost it. Yeah, I lost it in the sleeve that they gave. Uh, just because I didn't think about it. For see how I know I needed I needed to be on the device. Is my that's the way I work. So that's the way it should work. Um, so Tapper's review says the X13, the one main criticism you hear about the screen response time is not great. 25 milliseconds on that unit. Whereas we got three milliseconds on the Zephyrus G14, which I have back here. So uh, 25 milliseconds versus three. Yeah, that's a big difference. Uh, so fast moving games can look blurry. Uh, maybe not the best for the first person shooters and such. Yeah, a better response time would have been better, but I'm not really... Uh, complaining too much because I mean, look at this. Can you believe this is packing an RTX 30 Ti under the hood? That's pretty pretty impressive for a thin and light laptop. And I mean, look how thin this is. You can see it here. Look how thin that is, right? Um, and thermals have been pretty decent, surprisingly. Now, the one thing I'm not crazy about with this one is that the RAM is not upgradable, and I'm not surprised because it is an ultra portable, thin and light but it's not upgradable. So uh, that is a little bit of a negative. Now on this unit, the RAM is also not upgradable, but the SSD is. So the SSD is upgradable on all of these. This is also soldered in. So just so you know, when you're getting these thin and lights, convertibles, don't expect to upgrade the RAM. So make sure you get enough RAM for your needs when you check out. That's important. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. I need to take a drink here. So how's everybody doing? I hope everybody, it's been a little bit of a while since I live streamed. So uh, hopefully, cheers, everybody. Good to see everybody. But I wanted to go live because I missed you guys. And I wanted to gauge to see what's going on with the audience because I'm getting more stuff in, but I want to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Um, we're going to be getting the Dells in. I'm going to be getting the XPS 13 Plus. I'll be getting the XPS 15, the 17, all upgraded. Again, those are mostly internally upgraded. Uh, the XPS 13 Plus is a new design, and that's the one I'm pretty interested in as well. I'm also interested in the Lenovo uh, Yoga X13S with that Snapdragon 8, uh, 8C, what is it, the Gen 3, 8CX Gen 3. That one looked really good. I got a little hands-on time with it when I went to New York last month to see it. Uh, that was pretty good. So a lot of exciting stuff coming. It's time for vodka. 
Yes, definitely time for vodka, but it's almost time for Andy's bedtime. So, all right. One more question. I'm considering overall Windows 2-in-1 laptops. Which one do you have the best pen and touchscreen? I'm not the biggest. I'm not the. I'm not an artist. I'm a bullshit artist. I'm not an artist, but, um, you know, I like the S Pen, uh, to be honest. I really like this S Pen. It worked really well. I like the way it feels. Almost like a pen to paper type feel. But I like the Surface Pen, what they've been doing with the Surface Pro 8. The Slim Pen 2 is a nice feeling, pen to paper feeling. I'm really impressed with that. I've used the Apple Pencil here and there. Uh, it's okay, but I really like the Surface Pen, what they've been doing with their Carpenter style Surface Slim Pen 2. So if that helps any. And um, and the touch screens are all good. I mean, I haven't had any issue with any of these touch screens on the table here. And this, by the way, has pen support. I used my second gen Surface Pen on this. So hopefully that answers your question. Like the Lenovo, but the price is a bit too much. I am super curious about the 7i. I should be getting that as well, so stay tuned. Since it should be less pricey, I wish Lenovo would be more upfront with release dates. I think the problem is we're still in a the pandemic shortage type mode, but it's getting better from what I understand inside information. So we'll start to see better ship times. We are starting to see a little bit maybe. So hopefully we've turned the corner. I don't know yet. This year, hopefully, we'll have more availability of this stuff. But they're up as they're up front as they can. I mean, they're they're having trouble getting these devices. So when we can get one in, like I did with the Lenovo, I'm running with it because uh, first of all, I want to be the first one, and I was, I think, the first one to actually do a real hands-on of it. So I'm glad I was the first one. I'm getting the benefit of that with all the views. But secondly. I'm a big fan of this line. I'm glad they sent it to me because I'm the right reviewer for this because I've used pretty much every iteration of this since its release. You know, this is 10 years old. This is a 10-year anniversary, I believe, of this yoga line. So I've reviewed pretty, pretty much most of the line over the years. So there you go. Curious to see how Samsung was able to get the first Alder Lake Ultrabook out so fast. Well, Samsung's a big company with a lot of resources, so I'm not surprised. Uh, uh, that being said, they really tempered this Alder Lake processor pretty pretty uh, extensively here. Half the speeds in the multi-core score, I'm getting a little bit over 5,000 on the multi-core score, half of what I'm getting on this one, which is running the same chipset. So pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Again, it's just a matter, do you want ultra portable or do you want uh, a little bit beefier device, a little bit heavier device, but better cooling, bigger battery, better performance? So you just kind of have to decide what's important to you. Some people value portability over uh, high performance because this will certainly perform well enough to do everyday tasks, like I mentioned. This is only going to affect people doing like video editing, which I wouldn't do on this anyway uh, to begin with uh, on an ultra portable. I'd rather get a, a laptop like I have here, uh, a full-size 16-inch laptop to do video editing. But that's just me. I'm a content creator. That's just my needs. But some people just need a device like this to just throw in their bag. They want it to look good, to be stylish, right? And that's exactly what this does. Um, it's a stylish, fingerprint-laden, uh, beautiful burgundy laptop. Where can you find that? I mean, this color is absolutely gorgeous. Somebody didn't like what I just said. Again, well, I don't care. F you. <laughs> is a Samsung laptop good for architecture? I don't think so. I don't think it has the multi-core performance. The single core is all decent, uh, but you want something with a discrete GPU, right, for architecture, CAD work. So... Samsung, you know, I don't have the 15 inch yet. I'm going to get the 15 inch. Hopefully we'll get something with Arc Graphics as well, which was announced by Intel today. They gave some more information on that. I'm looking into that. Hopefully the Arc Graphics will really make a difference as well. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So the proof is always in the pudding, as they say. We're over an hour already. We've got 56 of you watching. Curious to see. Um, let's see. We already did that one. New to the channel, thanks, awesome content. Thank you, I thank you, Google account, whoever you are. I appreciate that. All right. Anything else, people? Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. Um, here's my two cents so far. 
So out of all these, my favorite is the Lenovo so far. The reason I say that is I'm a big fan of this. I like the Storm Gray. I like the build. I love the sound bar. Love the 4K display, 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Love all that. Not perfect, of course. There are some things I think they can improve, but the reality is uh, I think they hit a pretty much a home run with this, and it's got to be in the laptop of the year running with this one because battery life, which is one of my last remaining factors to see on this, well, what's the deal on this? Um, if you're joining us late, I got basically 17 hours of, of my continuous web surfing test, Wi-Fi over of 150 nits and battery saver mode. I did put it on battery saver mode. And this is fantastic. So what do we get? We got a Core i7, 1260p, excellent battery life with this, uh, very efficient. That tells me it's very efficient. So uh, one of the things they were promising was a more efficient, cooler laptop. And I think for the most part, I think they did it. Yeah, 17 hours. So real world, I'm going to say conservatively 10 to 12 hours, depending on what you're doing of mixed use. So go from there. All right. I appreciate that. You're from down under, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Kuzeno Builders. When do I plan on getting the full reviews of the Lenovo and the Book 2 360? So uh, hopefully I'll get at least the Lenovo out this weekend. I'm working on it. Uh, now that I have the battery life, I got to finish my gaming performance test but once i do that i'm pretty much ready to rock still got to edit and do all that stuff so uh, i'm going to shoot for this weekend maybe saturday sunday the latest on the lenovo and then i'll do uh, right after that i'll get to the samsung i still have to also and i also probably this weekend the galaxy tab s8 plus which i'm enjoying very very much as far as an android tablet is concerned more than i thought i would be not perfect either but beautiful display uh, I love the DeX mode. I'm going to talk more about that. So if you're a Samsung fan, now's a good time to make sure you're uh, sticking around the channel, subscribing, because you don't want to miss it. You got it, my friend. Uh, the Samsung had a couple of updates. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that they're going to do a firmware update that will hopefully improve performance at least a little bit. Um, so far, out of the box... 5,500 on a multi-core score in Geekbench. It's just not going to cut it. Didn't do great on the R15 Cinebench. I showed you the numbers, people. The numbers don't lie. Now, I made sure it was on performance mode and all that, so we'll see what happens. All right. So Magic is saying, I actually really don't understand why companies make most laptops silver or gray. Only Samsung has a red color. It's gorgeous. Uh, we are not... Uh, we are not forward to see more colors. Yeah, I think we will we'll see more colors, but I mean, it would be nice, but I like what they're doing here. Again, again, you know, give Samsung some credit here. This is a beautiful laptop, although it is a major, major fingerprint magnet. So build quality couldn't be any better. The color couldn't be any better. The performance, eh, not great. A little disappointing. I, and in all fairness, too, I think I... You know, coming from this one here, from this laptop, uh, unfairly maybe, but they're running the same chipset. This is not that much bigger than this one to get double, double basically the the score on the multi-core really was surprising to me. And I think the issue is going to be with the cooling, the thermals, the fact that this is thinner, even by a few millimeters makes a huge difference for the performance. Human oil absorber. Yeah, you can't help it. You're going to be wiping this down. You're going to be wiping this down. And this one, you know, not so bad. Not so bad, but this one, not good. But that was the same issue with the blue one from last year. And here I'm wiping it down, but again, oil's a little bit harder. You have to use some sort of spray or something specialized, but you don't want to ruin this either. So there, you're going to be wiping it down. How's the battery... On the yoga. Oh, uh, it's really good. So if you're joining us late, Hadar, uh, I was just mentioning, I did my battery test. I got 17 hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi, 150 nits. I would translate at that into 12 to 10 to 12 hours of mixed use. That's good. This is very good battery life. I'll have more to say on it in the full review. 
The blue is so pretty. I still have the 15 here. Um, I could bring it out in another video. But yeah, the blue is beautiful. But again, I'm loving this burgundy color. Yes, it is a fingerprint magnet. Yes, it is uh, hard to keep clean. But when it is clean, it is absolutely gorgeous. Good to see you, Ayanuddin Ahmed. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, so that that was pretty good. We got, you know, just when I, we already started to wind this down and we already got 67 people, which was probably the most we've had today. I don't know. Uh, let me see. What did we have so far? I think we had 65 was the biggest in terms of the concurrent. We did get uh, Mentalic Mutant. Thank you for becoming a member, by the way. Really, really appreciate it. If anybody else wants to become a member, you know what to do. Hit the join button. It costs less than a Starbucks coffee. I'm, I think I'm worth more than a Starbucks coffee, people. Or at least I think I am. I don't know, but I've been busting my ass. I hope you appreciate this. Uh, how the... F, how the F, I'm tired. How, how I've been burning the midnight oil getting you these reviews. I'm doing this by myself, people. Yes, by myself. I need to get a team together working on it. I know I had somebody, but that didn't work out. So it's we got to get the people, we got to get help here. You're worth all the gold in the land. <laughs> I appreciate that. See, Keith Benjamin, who's been with us a long time, he knows. He knows. I see you, Keith. All right. Press the like button. Federico, bring in the, the heat. Yes. Press that like. Press that effing like button. Press it twice. Pre oh, no. If you're going to hit the, the thumbs down, even though nobody can see it other than me, make sure you hit it twice. Okay? Do me that favor. You hate me that much, just hit it twice. Um, so you, you appreciate your content as much as I do a chai latte. Well, that means a lot. All right. <laughs> Keith says you need a large eyeballed assistant who works for tuition in the background. No, what I need is a beautiful bikini clad uh, assistant uh, who is absolutely gorgeous. Then we can talk. But I don't think my wife would appreciate it too much. But, you know, it's all for the science. It's all for the technology. So there you go. <laughs> coming up uh, i'm a little when i when i saw laughing like that you know i'm getting tired all right which laptop do i recommend for an mba student the xps 1390 or the samsung galaxy book 2 pro 2 oh i hate the name book 2 pro are you looking at through the 360 or not if you're just looking i don't have that one yet or maybe i'll be getting that we'll see uh, I love the 9310, but Dell's coming out with their new stuff. So let's wait a little bit before we can make a recommendation because I do have some stuff coming in that I think might be part of the conversation. Where is the S8 Ultra review? That is coming this weekend. I'm almost done. Uh, I didn't expect to get all this stuff in and I wanted, I had to sort of prioritize, but I'm back to the S8 Plus. I promise you it's coming. Yeah, sir. Thank you for your patience. I have a funny question. Have you ever considered evaluate or take a look at a Huawei Matebook? Have I ever? People, you know I've done it. Last year I did the Matebook uh, Pro, um, Matebook X Pro, whatever they call it. Uh, got about 25, 30,000 views, so it did okay. In the past, I built my channel on Huawei when I first started. So yeah, I was one of the biggest proponents of the Matebook series. The E, the Matebook E I did. I did the, the Pro every year. Uh, with the you know the pop-up webcam and the keyboard all that stuff so i do have a relationship with huawei but they're in europe and i don't know if i'm a priority for them so simply because i'm here in the u.s and these are not readily available in the u.s so there you go but yes i do review huawei laptops especially the MateBook line when i can get one do you have any the yoga 7i for this year i'm getting it uh, I do anticipate getting it there. You know, they're like clockwork Lenovo with me. So I have no problem uh, with them. So yeah, once I get it, I'm going to do, a, you know, do my usual shtick. You do my usual thing. What's my main go-to laptop? Um, the, so I work, I edit on a MacBook Pro. Everybody knows that on the 2019 MacBook Pro, Final Cut Pro. That's the only thing I use it for. Uh, but on a Windows side, I use the, uh, my main laptop is the Dell XPS, uh, Dell XPS 159310 that I bought. So it's the one with the Core i9, uh, 11900H. 
RTX 3050 Ti, I believe in that one. And I use that as my daily driver for Windows. So that, for those wondering. But that's just me. I'm a big fan of that. I'm looking forward to the refresh. Dell did say they will be sending me one, so we'll see. I don't know when, but hopefully soon. So which one do I... I'm going to be doing head-to-head -head on these, so I'm not going to give away which one I'll do. I think you kind of figured out already, though, uh, which one is looking better. I mean, I'm not going to... I mean, it's pretty obvious this one is doing better in terms of the performance. It's just a matter of looks. Do you want to get this one, which is like a lot, you know, thinner than this one, uh, lighter than this one, than this one, but at the same time, um, you're getting better performance. The battery life is definitely going to be better on this one. I can tell you that right away. Uh, this one I'm still working on. I didn't do the battery life yet, so we'll see. But we have another super chat from Zoda Stevens. All right. Uh, $5. Which laptop that you reviewed is good for architecture? So what the one that I've reviewed that I would recommend is the P series from Lenovo ThinkPad line. If you're going to go with the P1, that's a decent one, although it is thin and light. It may not be the most powerful, but the P17, if you don't mind lugging around a giant, uh, look pretty good as well. I like that monster. Um, and I recently reviewed that. So if you're going to look for a workstation, that's going to be pretty good. It's great for architecture. The Z series uh, from HP has been good. I got something coming from them, from their Z, Z line. So we'll see, right? We'll see. So um, the Z book line. So we'll see. I have a, also a mini PC workstation type thing coming from the z book line so from the z line from hp which is their workstation so it should be good yeah i like the p series by the way i'm getting all the think pads they're coming in i will be reviewing the gen 10 of the lenovo yoga um no, i'm sorry the um oh my god the think pad x1 carbon gen 10 yoga gen what are we at seven now uh, yeah, I will be reviewing all of that stuff. So stay tuned. I did get a sneak peek when I did go to New York. So there you go. Yeah, the Lyoga looks better. I, I wish the Samsung at least hit like 8K. You mean on the, on the multi-core score? Would be nice. So I'm hoping a firmware update or something will bump up the performance a little bit. I don't have too much hope though. Compare the 9i to last year's model. Which one do you like the most? Now, I do have the black one with the glass and the leather. I still have that, actually. I think I still have that. Or oh, did I send it back? I think I still have that. If I do, I can do a little comparison. That was a pretty innovative uh, design. That one had the, the haptic touchpad that had the black glass um, deck on it. It had the, the leather on it. I mean, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, that is, I think, I believe is a 16 to 9. I love the move to the 16 to 10 on this one. Um, really, really good. I'm just debating whether I should keep this live, uh, this replay, or should I unlist it and just put it into a playlist? I don't know. I, I really got to see how, how we're going to do this going forward. Hi, Andrew. Quick question. Uh, question about the matte touch screens any idea for such two-in-ones with this year hoping for a premium amd version but intel seems to have the premium two-in-one cornered with the evo platform uh stay tuned i think dell might have some stuff i don't know i gotta really think about that one so we'll see good to see grendel here a lot of matte displays are coming in there are some touch screen i know a i know hp makes some in their elite book line so we have to just wait and see uh, this is a beautiful 4K display, people. Uh, 3840 by 2400. I've been very happy with it. Touch display. You can use your finger. You can use the pen. You know, it's been it's been very good. Now, the one thing that uh, another thing I would tell the product manager if I have them on the show would be uh, go with a give us an option for higher refresh rate. So you see, the only option you have on this is 60 hertz. You see it right there. Um, and that means that you're not going to get the as smooth scrolling as something with 120 hertz or even 90 hertz with the um, carbon, the uh, yoga carbon that I looked at with the OLED display. So, you know, the idea pad. So that would be a very interesting comparison video. And I think that might be on the deck for this video, for this channel. So we'll see. The 7i will have the 90 hertz. So it's going to be very similar in a lot of ways to 
This one, which is the carbon, let's make room here. I don't want to lose the Samsung off the end of the, the desk here, but let's plug it in because I don't think I have any juice. And this is one of my favorites also. And, you know, I got to give them credit. I mean, I like what Lenovo is doing there. Are you going to review the Mac Studio? We'll talk about that, Tech Freunies. How are you? I didn't see that you were already here, man, but I'm glad you would join us. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do the Mac Studio only because it's expensive and I don't know how many views I'd get, to be honest. But this, um, this laptop here, let me see if it has some juice I could turn it on, um, is really one of my favorites this year so far. And yeah, it's running the Ryzen 5000 series. Yeah, it could be updated to 6000 at some point, but this was just sent to me by uh, Lenovo. And this OLED display is a 90 hertz refresh rate, okay? So this has 90 hertz. And if we go into the display settings, you can see here, and you go into the advanced display settings, uh, 90 hertz is selected. Now it's 60 out of the box, but you'll go to 90 hertz. So what does that mean? So if you're going to start scrolling, you know, let's go to YouTube or whatever. Um, you're going to want to, you want that smooth scrolling. I don't know if I'm connected to the internet. Let me see what's the, what's going on with that. Now it looks like I'm connected. I don't want to get any, uh, windows weekly. We don't want them. They're not friends of ours. I'm kidding. <laughs> They're all right. <laughs> um, but if you want to do some scrolling, Shout out to Windows Weekly. I think they need our help. We're doing better than them. Uh, so look, this is this is it. Look, smooth, smooth, fluid, smooth. It is really nice. So this is only, so this one is only, only. 60 hertz is fine, but 90 hertz is better. Now this is a 4K display. This is a 2.8K display. So how better is the Yoga 7i Carbon since it has an OLED with a higher refresh rate? So I don't know necessarily it's better. Check out my review. I did an unboxing and review. I don't know if it's better, but if you want an, uh, something with a Radeon uh, graphics, if you want something with the 5000 uh, series Ryzen, then obviously this is a good choice because they're very efficient processors. That's the U-series processor, but this one uh, has the new P-series from Intel. 4K plus display. So it's, you just have to ask yourself, do I want a higher refresh rate, which this one will have, or do I want to have the higher resolution? 2.8K is nothing to sneeze at as far as a re resolution. I think it's a nice balance because now you have 90 hertz and a high refresh rate. This one is 4K, but at 60 hertz. So again, just a matter of what you're looking for. Okay. battery so how is the battery with the yoga 7i so it's been very good now i did really surprisingly good with the uh 90 hertz enabled check out my video on that um let me see if i have my battery test screenshot here no i don't have it on this one i uploaded it but you, you look at my video if anybody's curious the battery life was pretty decent on this uh surprisingly good considering it is an oled display and it's absolutely gorgeous look at this it's absolutely gorgeous it's a little less reflective than this one but they're both very good both are very good excuse me my allergies are acting up okay love okay so here's another question uh love your channel bronx bomber are you a yankee fan because if you are you are one of my favorite people tonight. <laughs> uh, Bronx Bomber is asking, um, 718, yeah, you're in the Bronx, my friend. I was born in the Bronx. Uh, hey, Andrew, love your channel. Question, will you be reviewing the Intel Arc version of the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro? Yes, I will be getting it at some point. Again, Samsung's not giving it to me. I'm going to have to get it. Uh, I do plan on doing the 15-inch with the Arc graphics, so stay tuned. I haven't been able to get my hands on one yet, but yes, and yes, you are. All right. So I'm looking forward to the Yankee season, and uh, hopefully they'll have a good season because we need one. 4K kills the battery. Not, but you, you know, Yasser, I would agree with you, but I just did my battery test on this. Uh, you know, I did put it down to um, 150 nits, 
It's about a quarter, like 25% brightness. And then I did put it into the battery saver mode, but I got 17 hours on the continuous web surfing test, which is pretty amazing. So that's been pretty good. So we have 58 of you watching. All right. My allergies are killing me. Okay, can you show the speaker quality on the load over soundbar? I did in the video. Go to the video, Federico. I'm not going to do I, I I mean, I guess I could do something now. Let me go to Epidemic Sound. Hold on. Maybe let's try something. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be better sound. So let me uh, let me see here. I can't see the password there. Just let me load in Epidemic Sound. I'm going to put a link for Epidemic Sound. Everybody wants it. All right, so we're going to try something here. Let's take a look at the load both of these up. We could see which one is better. I mean, we'll just, you know, I could do it even with the Samsung if we have some time here as well. Let me log in. Just bear with me, folks. You know, we're informal tonight. I don't know what's going on. I haven't stuck there. Here we go. There we go. Oh, I hate these stupid capture bullshit. Uh, traffic lights. Hold on. I hate this. Hopefully I got it. I did. All right. So let's uh, let's play the let's uh, let's let's put the camera down on here and I have my microphone here. So we'll take this microphone. Let's move these over a little bit. And let's play this first song here. Hold on. Let me see if I can do the same song. So here's one. Here we go. So we're going to... Okay, that was that was the yo that was the uh, OLED uh, carbon. That was the carbon. Now this is the Yoga, Yoga Nine I. Ready? Same song. tell you what they both sound good but the yoga got a little bit more bass the than this one right i don't know less bass i don't know better on the newer one i think they both were good let's bring in the samsung let's do a sound test there let me let me get it set up hold on informal tonight people don't kill me here okay and i thought the speakers are pretty good on the uh both of those so let's see now Let me load in Epidemic Sound. Okay, let's set up the Samsung here. Let's put it. Let's put it in the middle here. Okay. Let's uh, let's play this. I'll put it on maximum volume. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, they were all on 100% volume, so Samsung was the weakest out of them. And again, it's a much thinner and lighter, but what really surprised me was how good this one was. Uh, I forgot how good the carbon was in the sound department. Uh, but the sound bar sounded great on this one. So these sounded really good. This one was good, but not as not as full or as rich as that. So hopefully that that answers the question. Because Samsung's super thin weak, thankfully they still have 3.5. Hopefully that sound test, a little informal, but you know, it was some give us a little an idea here of what to expect. My dog Max is here. So uh, there you go. Any other requests here <laughs> taking requests we're already an hour and a half it's almost 9 48 p.m pacific time but i'm having such a good time but uh let me know if there's any other questions the carbon is the better of the three and i i kind of agree i'm surprised how good this one was good job samsung i'm um, good job, like samsung good job lenovo on both of these but i kind of like this carbon even with that sound bar i'm kind of liking the carbon what they did there was pretty nice and these are dolby vision speakers dolby atmos uh this is uh dolby atmos also i think all of them have dolby atmos they went to uh, bowers and wilkins on that one does the zephyrus sound better than the carbon no i think the carbon sounds better i have the zephyrus here hold on This is turning into like the sound test uh, for for laptops here. I don't know if we're going to have juice on this one. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. I don't know. Well, maybe it is. Okay, hold on. This is the G14 people. See it here. So, really loving this laptop. Uh, I don't know if it's got juice. We'll find out. I may have to plug it in, but I got to look for a plug that would work on this one because this one I probably could charge it on I don't remember if the I don't know if we're going to be able to get this one going oh wait it is it is booting up okay how about the carbon battery performance yes it's in the Marcello it's in my review go to the review you have all the numbers there you know where and I have sections I have all chapters so you don't have to watch the whole review you like what I'm doing for you, man? I hope you people appreciate this. <laughs> we got the G14 for 2022. We got the Carbon uh, for 2022 with OLED. We got the Samsung for 2022. We got the Yoga 9i. And back there is the, what is that? The Asus ROG Flow X13 for 2022. Nobody has this. I'm the only one. All right, good night. Take care, man. Thank you for joining and becoming a member Give it up for Mentalic Mutant. Have a great weekend, my friend. All right, so let's uh, let's load this up and let's see if I can get the sound on this one. We'll see what the G14 has to offer. I forgot how good this is. Let's see here. Yeah, I do it because I have long videos. I have a long form videos. So I find it important for people to find the information as fast and as efficiently as possible. So I do that. So yeah, I, see what I do for you people? Okay, let me just, uh, one second. Another CAPTCHA. I got to pick the ones with the mountains or hills. There's one, there's another, there's another. And I think I can verify. All right, let's uh, let's hear the same song, Detergent, and that's by Dylan Sitz, by the way. Shout out to Dylan Sitz. I like your music, my friend. And let's give a listen to the G14 for 2022, the Zephyrus. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the carbon. Uh, 
Samsung. Yoga. Let me, all right. So, I uh, thought the G14 was good. I still like the, the carbon, the OLED carbon best so far. So, the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 carbon OLED, I should say. So, carbon first. I kind of agree with this. Carbon first, Yoga second, G14 third, and then Samsung is last. Yep, I kind of agree with that. I agree with that. So, and I didn't even bring in the X13. I don't think it's going to be that good. But let's, you know what? Let's be complete here. Hold on. Might as well. So it's sibling here. We have the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. But then here's the flow that I just released my video on. And really nice display on this one. And let's do one final test with this one. Let me just load it up. Um, let me go to Epidemic Sound. Oops. And by the way, touch screen on this. And the glossiness is very, very tempered on this. Very good. So this one, I can go to Epidemic Sound. I've already got it. And let me go to Detergent. Okay, ready? Here we go. This is the, X, the ROG Flow X13 for 2022. I think carbon still is the winner. This I don't know what you think. This is better than the Samsung. Did you think this? Let's let's listen to the Samsung in this one and then we could wrap it up with that. Let's let's go to the Samsung and then we'll go back to the X13 uh from Asus. About the same, right? I think about the same. So I want to thank uh, Dylan Sitz, who with the song Detergent, you could find it on Epidemic Sound. I should have a link to it at some point uh, for those that are interested. But, you know, good job on that. But as far as the uh, sound test, what did you think? Let me know. I think the Carbon, the the Lenovo Yoga or IdeaPad, depending on where you are, Slim 7 Carbon OLED had the best sound surprisingly second place was the yoga 9i 14 inch with its rotating sound bar third place was i would put the uh, asus zephyrus g14 and then i think it's a toss-up between samsung and the x13 the flow x13 from rog so pretty similar okay andrew had a link in his video description for the laptop review yes so all of these, I have links. Uh, I could, when I'm done with this, I'll put it in the live stream, but just go to my channel. They're all there. You want to see numbers on them. I put numbers on them, you know, benchmarks. Um, you know, you know where to find the stuff. I put chapters in all my videos. So very, make it very easy for you to find your information you're looking for. Uh, here we have all these laptops. 
Uh, really out of fun. I could do these uh, kind of comparisons more often. Uh, so this was kind of impromptu, but I thought it worked out pretty good, right? Pretty good. All right. So I think we're going to wrap it up here at an hour and 42 minutes, a little bit longer than I thought. Uh, I just wanted to come on and say hi, but it turned out to be a little bit more involved with its huge sound test. But I think we're going to start doing a little bit more of these uh, live stuff. Uh, we'll do. Hopefully, we'll get the product manager for Lenovo on, so he can talk about the nine i and some other stuff. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So let me see what we can arrange. A good relationship with Lenovo, we know that. So I have a good one. So we'll see. But uh, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the moderators for doing such a great job, and for those that gave a live chat, um, a super chat rather. I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, the new member we got today, uh, Mentalic uh, something. I'll, I forgot. I, I'm mental. I need that password manager. If you saw my video today, go over to um, uh, Roboform. For, and I want to thank them for sponsoring today's video. They were really, really nice uh, to sponsor that. And I like it. I've been using Roboform. Actually, been pretty good. Because I can't remember. I'm an old, old man already. So the RoboForm, I don't have to remember passwords. They've been great. But uh, I want to thank everybody. And um, I got a lot more testing to do, as you can see here. I got my work cut out for me. But uh, I'll have full reviews coming. Uh, also of the S8 Plus from the Tab, S line, Tab line from Galaxy, Samsung. So we have a lot to do here, people. Until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. See you soon. Bye-bye.